Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Raygate Lake and this is episode number 25 of Real Up My Park from scratch. And of course I'm back to word salad my way through an episode because you guys seem to love that. And of course if you are new, if you're returning, I absolutely love having every single one of you here. So thank you guys so much for coming along. Thank you for all of your interactions. Thank you for the discussions on Facebook over the last couple of days about the next projects and everything. I think I know what's going to be what's going to be coming up. So really, really chuffed to, to have you guys guys along and it's getting a bit sad because this is the penultimate big build episode this there's only two episodes left where we're building big things in the park before I then put the final touches on and send it out to the workshop for you guys to play with so it's, it's a bit it's a bit sad but it's nice that this park is actually coming to an end it's nice that it's being rounded off and and, and finished so yeah guys thank you so much for everything that you do and of course you already know that I'm on the grind for the thousand subscribers uh, we're getting there slowly but surely so you know what to do if you're not already subscribed please please and also share thanks so <laughs> <laughs> cheesy that's so cheesy i'm gonna leave it in so here we are then at the uh the last episode uh, we were doing our ultra realistic dark ride for our ultra realistic uk park um raygate lake so this is where we are uh, where we're sitting and actually i'm really surprised at how well that this park has been received and how well this dark ride was received uh, because when i was sending out previews there were there was a lot of divided opinion um and I'm actually really chuffed that you guys have liked how it's ended up. Like, that's actually quite nice. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. So, here we are. Curse of Drakeford Manor. Uh, such a cool name. It's named after Jordan, who did a lot of work on uh, on the backstage of this one in terms of giving me some insights and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome guy. So, here we go. Ah, oh, really bad camera angles. Like I, I'm, I'm starting to really suck at doing this camera stuff, right? So this is our uh, this is our queue line, uh, and then we enter into uh, our bigger queue line. And even though I've I've got a limit of a thousand five hundred guests in the park in a park of this size, uh, look at how many people are actually queuing for this ride. It's like the log flume all over again. Um, then we come into pre-show. And I'm not going to show you around the entire ride, obviously, because, yeah, you've already seen it in the previous episode. But this is how it looks from up above uh, in the daytime, because we haven't, haven't actually looked at it in the, in the daytime. So this is the actual ride itself. And it goes around loads and loads of other stuff and loads and loads of other things. And you've got the maintenance area, you've got the station area. And then um, I don't know, actually, if I showed you in the last episode. So I got, I got a bit carried away with the actual ride area itself, but the finished gift shop. So this is the finished gift shop. Let me just change my camera. There uh, we go. So... Uh, all the screens and everything over on that side and all of our gifty type stuff on this side. I mean, yeah, it's a gift shop, right? So it's looking good. I like it. I like how this has turned out. Um, and then there's the warehouse in, in the background. So because I'm word salading and you know it and you're going to rock me for it in the chat and I'm going to take it because I should. Uh, <laughs> this episode is one for the backstage fans. Um, so you know already that all throughout these builds, we've been doing backstage as and when we've been coming along. And I've been pointing out where there's going to be space for other things for backstage. But I needed to know how big the park was going to get to know what kind of facilities and kind of size we need, right? So we already know that we've got the stuff down here. And we've already know that we've got stuff down here. We know that we've got stuff up by the hotel and we've got space reserved by the hotel and we've got space down here, blah, 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 blah. So this is the episode then where we're going to really start to look at what backstage areas a theme park has so some of them we were already covered and, and already built and some i actually need to do in this episode so to give you a fair idea of the types of facilities that uh, are included in a backstage in a theme park i've got a list for you and i'm about to reel it off so i'll <laughs> grab a pen grab a pen and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to tackle all of these on a list individually one by one and each of the updates will be a batch of those facilities because you batch some of them together they'll have shared office spaces and stuff um so we'll that will be the updates that i'll do each of these in turn so in a theme park back of house you may not realize it because you just go for the rides and you go for the fun and you go for the shops and stuff but you may not realize that all of these departments exist within the back of house of a theme park so they are in no particular order um wardrobe where you get your uniforms from 
uh, an entertainment space where all of your entertainers can practice and perform and, and everything where they where they do all of their rehearsals uh, canteens and cafes for all of your staff that are on park you'll also have training facilities you'll have plenty of office space for individual departments and that's things like uh, IT marketing uh, finance, customer services, HR, retail and procurement, profit protection, probably some sort of um, profit-related office. Uh, You'll have meeting rooms, you'll have central planning, you'll have health and safety, you'll have continuous improvement. So they're the guys that would be the ones that are looking for process, business process improvements. They'll be specifically looking for that sort of thing. Uh, You then also have spaces for security. You'd have a cash office for your cash handling areas. You'd have uh, ride operations they'll have a separate office you'll have tech services so they're the, they're your engineers they're the ones that come and fix your rides but you will then also have a department for innovations so they are people that install weather vanes and lights to catwalks um, they will have a department of their own uh, you'll also have a central hub area as well where you have like a almost like a command center imagine Jurassic World um, you'll also have uh, space for gardening and your park presentations. You'll also have a recycling area. You'll have probably an office for internal design things. So stuff like uh, signage, signages, if you've got any signs that need to be made and created or any characters that need to be made or paper mache rocks that need to be made, you'll probably have an on-site thing for that. Uh, you may have warehouse space, which you've already got. Um, and you may also have space for retail partners that you've got. So if, if people have, have come in and done that. So as you can see, that's quite a massive list. And I'm going to go through all of those with each update. So I think it's probably about time that I cut to that first one, right? Then let's, let's start talking about some of these facilities. All right, so it's taken some configuration and this is what I've come up with. And so I've done a little bit of changing to my initial thoughts. So uh, like all of this stuff up here, for example, was going to be up by the hotel. But I kind of changed my mind and thought, well, this is all going to be the recycling center and the tech services guys, the gardeners, the storage warehouses and everything. And you would typically do a lot of work in those areas outside of park hours. So you'd be dealing early in the morning and late at night. And I kind of thought that, that would be a bit of a bad idea to put them up by the hotel tell right because they just it doesn't make sense it's just gonna be too noisy so I put it down here instead uh, close to the actual main central central hub of things uh, and all I've done here is I've just started to um, pull together how I want these warehouses to, to look so in here you typically go, typically going to find gardening um, these are the guys that are going to go off and do your landscaping and, and making sure that the park is looking lovely uh, you sometimes call them park presentation you may also find tech services down here as well so they're the engineers that would look after the rides they'll be the ones that be deployed if your ride breaks down this is typically where they would be but remembering as well that we've already put around the park with the uh, awful frame rate we've already put a couple of warehouses around the park already where they may also be stationed and primed ready to go so that they're not having to come from the back of the park every single time the ride breaks down um, and then you've also got a couple of storage warehouses that I've just put in here they are just cookie cutters uh, they're cookie cutters from the original ones so uh, the original ones at the front of the park um, and typically Raygate would probably go to a, a supplier or a warehouse and uh, go and buy a cookie cutter kind of warehouse. It's a good point, actually. Can you actually go to a shop and buy a warehouse like you can a shed? Like you go to a DIY shed store? Is there such a thing? I want to know now. Is there? Whatever. Anyway, so... Um, I've just also started the design of these warehouses. They're based on uh, a local industrial estate that I've got here. And I love the fact that they that this brick foundation work and then this metal cladding at the top. Obviously, it needs all of its detailing and everything going on. But this is the kind of uh, warehouse space that you're going to find to be used typically for storage and office space. And what I particularly like about them is with some of the uh, some of these like units, this top floor is used for uh, office space so you can put a second floor in uh, or a, a mezzanine type floor and you can have office space at the top and then um like a space underneath like a warehouse space underneath storage space underneath or you can just have it as a complete warehouse and then over here down at the bottom we've then got uh, recycling so this is where all of your bins and everything are going to come from the park they're going to get sorted and then what needs to be thrown into landfill can go be th thrown into landfill and then what's put into recycling sent to recycling and this is typically where you would do all of your sort of like sorting um 
And I think there's going to be equipment probably in one of these warehouses to do act that actual sorting. And I know that some of the parks that we work with, they're starting to go total green. So they will only ever use um, recyclable materials with everything. So all of the cutlery that you use and the plates and the bottles and the stuff that you have drinks in and all of that sort of stuff all has to be recyclable. So it can all just go straight into shipping containers and send it off park. They don't have to do any of the sorting. And it's all like a, a friends of the earth kind of initiative. Um, which I think it's quite a nice touch, actually. And I, I wish that like, more parks would do that. So kind of going for that vibe here, saying, actually, we, we know that we produce a lot of waste a year. So we should probably be doing something about it and making sure that we're making an effort to recycle more. So that's kind of what this area is, is supposed to be all about, have this massive recycling recycling area. And then coming down to this sort of side, I've started to pull together the offices and how I want them to look. Uh, so I've gone for that, that idea of the uh, stone cladding, the concrete walls and the red framework and everything. Um, and this is, let's be honest, this is probably way too glamorous for what the sort of thing Raygate Lake would put in, right? Uh, I know that some of the, the offices that I visit in some of our parks, they are literally literally these warehouses over here just shoved in because the idea is you want them to be put in as cheaply as possible they don't need to be uh, maintained as much and they're not monetizing right so they're not earning money for the for the for the park so why would they spend lots of money on a on a, on a actual office park but i'm kind of going for the office park vibe here i wanted that i wanted that and so in this first block um i've started to pull together my thoughts all based on the areas and based on the departments in the in the first part of this update so you typically come into a reception and then you'd find uh office generic office spaces you know desks and everything that you would need filing cabinets and computers and all of that sort of stuff um and the departments that you're going to tend to find that will be living together will be places like marketing so they're the guys that are going to be dealing with all of your adverts and your signage and your graphics design and your ride signage and all of that sort of stuff uh, they would all live uh, in here you may also find your profit protection department so they're the guys that are primed up to make sure that your park's not being ripped off by anybody so that's your staff that's your suppliers that's your customers making sure that the park is as primed as possible to be in a profitable position uh, you may also find finance so obviously they're the people that the whole the purse strings they're the ones that would pay for new rides they're the ones that make sure that shops are profitable make sure that um the park is running as, as efficiently as you possibly can you may also find H hr so they're the guys that deal with your personnel they're the ones that would do your hiring and your firing and making sure that everything is running smoothly making sure that you've got uh, all of your park ready to, to actually operate you'd also have central planning so they're the ones that would be uh, in charge of making sure that your park has got enough staff uh, and that your staff that you've got are all trained in the right aspects and they're all compliant uh, with their training making sure that you don't have any people working in food and beverage that shouldn't be that they haven't completed their training making sure that all of your ride staff are compliant and make sure that they've completed all of their required training um, which then leads into health and safety so health and safety would be here they're the ones that go around the park and put the uh, side every eight meters certain distance off the ground the sign has to be a certain size the font has to be a certain size the graphics have to be just right and remember the the episodes we were talking about those uh, so they're the guys that would be actually in charge of all of that um your retail and procurement we've actually already got in the park so if you remember back to the first warehouse that we've got down here uh, so we've actually put them in here this is where your retail and procurement department will be and they're they're typically the guys that are going to be dealing with your stock for your shops so they'll be the ones that decide what your shops are going to sell they'll be the ones that would source the supplier see the deliveries in making sure that all of the signage is correct making sure that any branding is correct that's what those guys would be would be responsible for um, and then you've also got one last department I think that would be in this area uh, and that's your continuous improvement so they're the ones that look at all of your processes across the park and making sure that they are as efficient as they possibly can so if you're doing a recruitment drive for example and it's taken 10 days to have somebody from application at the point that they submit their application to um, the point that they actually start in the park then the continuous improvement guys would look at that process and see if they can make any efficiencies to make it quicker that's an actual thing in a real in a real theme park that's a job in a theme park um, and they do they do an awesome job at doing that as well and they can save parks millions a year just by looking at processes and going this could be this could be way better coming over to the other building then uh i've sort of set this up more of as a as training facility stroke bigger office so again we've got the reception area each of the offices are going to have a kitchenette area and also enough toilets for the people that is going to service and this is going to be slightly bigger offices so probably more um shared services so this would be uh, a hot desking area where you can book a 
desk because you're coming to visit the park or something along the, along those lines. It's almost like a guest area. And then behind that is the training centre. So I've kitted this out with uh, three meeting rooms, two training rooms, a breakout area where you can sort of send groups off to do group activities and, and presentations and stuff, and then enough toilets to kit out uh, and making sure that that's all compliant. So in, in this setup, I've got every building has got a toilet block. And then over on this side, I've got the entertainment studio. And this is where the guys that do all of the entertainments would come and practice and rehearse. So all of your characters that are out on park, they would come here and do their dance routines. Anybody that's doing a show, they would come here to rehearse. They would have their team meetings here. This would be like their central hub. So you've got a couple of changing rooms that would uh, come in here as well so they can get changed and go off and, and do what they need to do in, in the park. Um, because obviously they don't come to work dressed as gulpy right they, they don't oh i can imagine if they did if they were driving a car dressed as gulpy that'd be like that'd make my day um so yeah they would come in and, and do what they need to do and then and go off onto the park and then um go and entertain your guests and then lastly this bit up here uh is the canteen area so this is where i've done the most work uh obviously as you, as you can as you can see so it's typically going to be a bit more of a grab and go buffet style uh canteen you tend not to have restaurant style canteens um, but i just wanted to make this a bit more glamorous than uh, a shack or a wooden shed or a metal warehouse um i just wanted it to be a bit more plush i you know you need to look after you need to look after your staff so i've just put this uh, counter in the front i made the counter myself it's just made out of tmtk pieces bit of glass and uh, a few beams because we love a good beam um and obviously it needs its fine details and stuff but i think it looks cool like i think it represents what it needs to do uh pulled across the the sandwich display units as well from um the other side of the park uh, and then I've just put a couple of shelves in and then I just put the uh, the actual made display counters along here So again using this idea of the uh, glass on the top um, The glass canopies and then I'm just going to fill it out with TMTK stuff that I've managed to download uh, So I just need to put those into actual game and then make those come across here And you've got your pay point and then at the back you would have a little bit of equipment um, you know, you'd like ovens and stuff pizza oven that you may find just to keep stuff warm and then the kitchen would be in this here in this area i'm not going to decorate the kitchen just like i've done it all of the other stuff just to refresh your memory it's because we don't have enough tmtk items on there to actually do it any justice uh, and the pieces that we've got are too big so you can't really start making equipment um i'm sure somebody could but i would no just no better things to decorate and then we've got the actual main area itself so they would need to be quite big uh, you have quite a lot of seating and quite a lot of tables and everything going along. Um, and then you just have, want some entertainment as well. So I've just put some games units and stuff in just so it's a bit of more of a, a an exciting area to be. And then this would be some kind of um, patio area where you come out in the summer and you can just sort of enjoy the... Uh, enjoy the out enjoy the outside and then i've also made sure that my strategy of getting people from lower down up to the top uh, is also complete as well so we've got some stairs that go up and i've also got a disabled ramp as well uh, so you can sort of cater, cater for your for your disabled uh, staff and then you've also got another access point here now you don't need to have a ramp on this one because you've got it elsewhere and um, so this is just nicely stairs uh, the other bit that I've done real quickly is just over here. Put another one of those warehouses just at the back of um, the woody just because you'd need some kind of midway storage. Um, nothing really now going to come over here, I don't think. I've just joined up all of the roads. Uh, now I just need to decorate those and, and put the final touches to there. And then just at the front of the park is the last bit. Again, a couple of storage warehouses that are going to be facing the dark ride. You'd want some stuff coming in for uh, things that are going to come into this area and then just one central like gateway almost if you like this is where you would sign in and out and go along the service road so that's uh, pretty much everything that i've done so far um i've also by the way put a position in here for um your cash handling and your control room i'm going to talk about that uh, your cash office and your control room i'm going to talk about that a little bit later uh, so that's everything for now i'm just going to carry on and i want to get all of this all of this done now so let's cut to the next update all right so this is the update that makes this look more like theme hospital or the sims than it does planet coaster uh, but we've got ourselves an office area and i'm going to show you around all of this down here and yes before you ask two days uh, it takes a long time 
takes a long, long, long time to kit out this sort of scale of office. In fact, more than I even imagined myself. But let's continue the lessons from the first update because I hadn't done this area up here and I'd intentionally left it to be separate. Uh, so we've got ourselves a command center control hub area. Uh, we've got ourselves a cash handling area and we've got ourselves a security area. So I put all of these together because they tend to be the more secure buildings. Uh, you would be forgiven for thinking that it would probably look a little bit like the Jurassic Park central hub one, right? This is probably way too extravagant for what Raygate Lake have got. I mean, most of our parks don't really have this. Um, but the whole purpose of this control center is it's one central place that everything happens. It's where engineers are dispatched from. It's where security is notified. It's uh, the ability for teams to be able to monitor everything that's happening in the park. So on these screens, you would have probably the park map in the middle here that have like little indicators and flashes and everything going on. And then you would have notifications of ride breakdowns that ping into the screen. So it says, right, this this ride is currently break, broken down. This is broken down. You might have some issues in shops that have been reported. So they would ping up on the screen um, you may have the queue times listed you may have capacity uh, information you may have throughput information all of that sort of stuff would appear on these screens and it enables these teams here to mobilize things that are needed so if they get a security report report that comes in they can just go straight to security and get them out or they can ping out to the security that are already on park if a ride uh, breakdown notification comes in then they can um, ping out the engineers and get them to go straight away so like they're a, they're a central team that makes sure that the park runs as smoothly as possible and every single park will have this in some capacity uh, some parks like disney way more extravagant way bigger um, but some of the smaller parks would still have this facility but it just may not be as grand as as, as what you're seeing here so i've tried to make this a thing in in this area anyway just to make it representative but like i say this is probably way too extreme for for raygate lake but i mean this whole office park is way too extreme so we're already in the realms of being far too beyond uh behind then i've just got the security office so this is where your security officers live um i've just used the the planet coast of police cars they're perfectly fine um they're not going out on park or anything. They're just going to live there to say that this is where they would park their buggies and service vehicles and stuff. Uh, and this is essentially where you'd find all of their equipment, you know, all of their jackets and stab vests and all that sort of stuff. Because, yes, theme parks can be quite rough places. Um, and our security teams do need that kind of protection, unfortunately. And again, they just have that that notification wall to go ping. There's, a, there's an incident or this is what's happening around park and stuff. Might even be a summary of what's going on in the command center next door. And then the cash um, area. So I tried to make a safe myself. Um, and there is a theme maker toolkit safe, but it's not quite right. But then I found that Kim Attack has got a, a Western safe that looks absolutely awesome and fits in really, really nicely on the workshop. So I've used that general principle of where a workshop item blueprint uh, is better than anything I can create. I'll absolutely use it. So uh, Kim Attack, thank you so much for this. This is this is awesome. I love it. Um, and then this area here is just essentially a accounting area. So the idea is you put your security and your cash areas together for obvious reasons. You're going to need some kind of backup. Your cash area is in the middle of the building, so it cannot be broken into from the outside. They have to physically come into a building or into the building to actually uh, do anything with it. And then you have what they call sluice gates. So uh, the only access into the cash building is through another doorway here. So if somebody were to break into this office, they would need to come through this front door, through the sluice gate, and then through the door going into the cash office. So you've got no other access from anywhere uh, anywhere else so that's probably as secure as, as you can get and then typically what would happen um and again this depends on the park and it depends on the park's security processes this isn't a, a given rule um but what would tend to happen is security would uh bring all of the cash or would escort some of the, the cash from the park so like the entrance areas the shops um any of the vendors and things like that it would be escorted from outside of the park into this cash area which is when it's then counted uh, and then banked now in the world where we're living in digital currency it's kind of these things are becoming more and more obsolete but people still want to pay by cash right so you still need to have cash offices and again this is probably way more elaborate to what uh, raygate lake would have but when I was working uh, in the pub, uh, it used to be that each safe was insured for a certain amount. So each, each safe could only hold a certain value of money uh, in it. And then if it was to be broken into or stolen, then it's then it's insured. And that's why you have multiple safes. 
So, and then the requirement of that is there is a, there is a minimum level of secu security that these saves have to be um, have to have. So, <laughs> the less the lesson there is, don't try robbing a theme park because it's not going to work. Uh, so, the next bit I need to do is the uh, maintenance area, but uh, so I haven't even t I haven't touched that. But look, this is looking so colourful and so different. And obviously, it needs its lids, right? So I don't know what roofing I'm going to use yet. Whether I'm going to use pitched roofs or whether I'm going to use flat roofs, um, or a combination of a combination of both. Haven't thought about haven't thought about that yet. So let's have a look at uh, everything that we've done. So starting to plan out the car park, um, and I'm starting to lay out where I want it. I think I'm going to get rid of the in-game pathing, and I'm actually going to do use terrain paint for the car park, because I think it actually looks a little, a little bit better. But I think I'm also going to keep the um, the paving for the roadways, because you've got the, the natural hill that it creates when you use the flattened terrain technique. So uh, I think I'm, just, I'm going to keep it that way. But coming into the main area then, so this is the uh, the entrance area kitted out uh, as brightly as I can but as effective as I can with with colors so I've used red and grays pinks and everything because that's what we've used elsewhere in the in the park and then I've just thrown around just like we did in the hotel some of that kind of idea of theme parky fun type stuff you know like the um, carousel horse that's sitting here in the and the penguin and this dude here is is meant to represent like a waxwork statue of something and it's the only one I can find that's a person and he's like hiya <laughs> so anyway um so yeah this is like the reception area and then coming into the office areas they're all pretty much kitted out the same uh they just have slightly different color schemes per office uh and slightly different equipment and uh layout and everything but this is pretty typical of an office i mean they're pretty bland they're pretty uneventful but they do take such a long time to kit out in planet coaster everything that you see here is mostly theme maker toolkit stuff so like the computers the desks the uh filing cabinets the clutter and everything is all pretty much an advert for theme makers toolkit um i think the only real thing actually that's not that's really bad actually i've just realized the only thing in here that's not theme makers toolkit is the floor because it's the smooth concrete that's bad well, that's good for Theme Maker's Toolkit because Theme Maker's Toolkit's awesome, but that's like a dawning realisation. There's nothing in here that came in game. Oh, console players, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. So I uh, also wanted as well with the, uh, the, the idea of the uh, theme park meeting rooms and everything is that you would probably put some kind of reference to the theme park around right so I thought it was really really important that they have all of the key rides in some capacity on the wall because it reminds you what you're working towards and what you're working for right so it reminds you the entire purpose of everything so that's the idea of of this collection up here and then obviously on the back wall here I've just got the other uh, the other ones like rapids and, 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 and whatever so that's that kind of office space this one again set up, set up the same really uh just a different layout same facilities same everything this office is exactly the same um just a different layout and it's that variation right so i need to go and do a, a, a theme makers toolkit pass and i need to do a what i call a randomization variation because in nature nothing is uniform and at the moment all i've done is i've copied and uh, copied across desks so i just need to go on i've done i've done it in one of the other offices i just need to go along and make these a bit more random you know change the positioning of the computers and delete things extra things and stuff um then we come over to wardrobe so this is where you're going to come and collect all of your uniforms so i've just put all of the rows of t-shirts for the stalls and everything that you may have and then just some um other like clothy type bits that are available on the makers toolkit and everything so just make that representative in this area and so when you uh when you join the the park you get told to come to wardrobe you pick up all of your all of your stuff and you go and get changed then you've got your toilets i need to do a tmtk pass in here this is just representative at the moment of the toilets but um i wanted to actually have them have them working and interestingly the they are the same size as the toilets i use on park it's just the difference is i'm not using the actual block toilets that guests can use um so i've actually 
uh, kitted this out properly. And then you've also got your kitchenette area. So we know that we've got a canteen over in the top, but if you just do want to come and have a, a quick break or uh, grab a drink or whatever, then you've just got this, got this awesome little area. And I thought it was important around the entire office to include some of the posters that are out on park as well. So you know, like the ice cream posters, the Mexican posters and stuff, because it brings the park into the office space. And as I said before, it, give, it reminds you what you're working towards. It reminds you why you're doing, why you're doing stuff. It's that place of place of fun. Coming over to the second office block, I'm not going to go around uh, this one because, again, the offices are all set up the same. The difference being this one's much bigger. It would almost be like a call centre. So this would be uh, where you would find like uh, customer services departments or annual pass departments and stuff like that. And so that's what I wanted in here, a bit more of a call centre environment. And then this would be a CEO office. Um, and again, with the, the ride names on the wall and uh, the stuff that's around. But these are a bit more exclusive desks. It's a bit of a, a bit of a nicer office uh, same setup with the toilet same setup with the kitchen no no sorry the kitchen's slightly different because it's out the front here it's more of a breakout area um i just put it in this in the reception area uh, this desk by the way that you've seen elsewhere i also used over in the very first episodes at the very front in the business lounge um and I wanted to bring that theme over here because it then creates it consistent across the across the entire park. So I thought that was quite important to do. Here's the entertainment space. Then this is typically where somebody would come to either get ready to go out on park or they would come and rehearse their shows. So of course you have it like a dance studio set up with the mirror at the one side, um, just some chill out areas at the back, all of the kits scattered around but these rooms tend to be just big open rooms so that they can move around the space as they need to um practice everything like you use quite a lot of space that, that you need and then you just got some changing rooms at the back with loads of lockers and whatever and one-way glass so you can't actually see in but you can see out and then the last bit here uh, is the training area so three meeting rooms this meeting room this meeting room and this meeting room they could also be used as training rooms but they are uh, essentially meeting rooms with the big screens that are on the wall that you tend to find so you have like meetings with suppliers and stuff uh, that would all all be in there and uh, again this is all just kitted out but meeting rooms tend to have fewer facilities and fewer things needed in it than an office does uh, because you you bring everything with you right so uh, you don't need to actually worry about putting putting stuff so much in here and then the training rooms this is my old vocation this is my old old job so i'm classically trained as a oh, that's classically trained <laughs> what i'm trained as a as a trainer um qualified and everything so this is like my this is my wheelhouse uh, again the idea is that you're reminding your, your learners what they're here for um and then you've got in the middle so you put uh drinks and toys out for people because people like to fiddle with things when they're um being taught so you just put like toys and stuff out and then you've got all of the facilities that you'd expect then to be able to take notes and everything that are all on there um you've got a couple of uh, these easels are awesome i found them on uh, tmtk but they're supposed to be like um whiteboards or uh, flip charts that you can start doing doing stuff and then you've got just one big massive projector screen with the computer that you can control it on on one side and then the other training room it's it's set up the same it's just decorated different right so it's exactly the same thing you'd have all of your equipment and stuff in these in these cupboards um so yeah the same principle with the setup of the the actual room you put your drinks and your toys and your books and everything out. Um, and then you've just got a breakout area here, nice and chilled out, nice and simple. Uh, nothing too extreme or taxing because the idea would be that they would actually go up into the canteen when they're going for lunch. So that's where we're going, up to the canteen. Done a bit of work up here then. This is pretty much done. Um, just the TMTK pass and a lid needed on it. Um, but this is this and I need to get rid of the archer. But this is what I wanted, this idea of um, that marble flooring. Uh, going into a, a more concrete type flooring it has to be quite a hard wearing area but I wanted it to be a bit more modern a bit more rustic looking that's why I've chosen the greys and the whites um, and then the chalkboards they are so good I love those chalkboards a KPR on theme makers talk it I believe apologies if it's not um, and then I just put the idea of all of the clutter and everything along here with the food underneath the I've tried my hardest to do what I can here to try and hide this but I've also used this to the advantage later on as well. Uh, yeah, so I just put all of the food and everything along here and you come along with the sauces and stuff. It's pretty much as good as you're going to get. Like every item, there's not every item of food on, on Theme Makers Toolkit. So 
I'll probably add to it if any more gets added to the theme makers toolkit. So I've got some gaps that I can do that. Um, and then you come and pay for your pay for your food, grab your drinks, etc. It's looking good. I like it. Um, and then there's your drinks. There's your drinks thing. I, I've, I've shown you this before, haven't I? Um, in the previous ones, like with the shelving and everything that's all beams all made of beams everything everything on here is beams uh, apart from the letters because <laughs> we love beams um, and then you come out into the big wide uh the big wide world of the seating area so again it's just this idea of having a a mass communal seating place it's not really kitted out and decorated as such it's just a a room to come and sit in um and then you've just got the patio outside the front here that's uh, going to have some seats and everything on it for you to come and sit down then i've just started the process of understanding what brickwork and what paving i want in this area to make it look right so that's pretty much everything that i've done so like i say this is two days worth of work it's quite a lot of effort um but my next bit is this maintenance area up here so i think i'm just going to shut up and i'm going to cut to this bit all right then, so I think this is going to be the penultimate update, you know, the one before the final one where everything comes to life, because there's quite a lot to show you on this one. I want to keep this as, as short as I possibly can, and you can see there's quite a lot of change already. So fundamentally, the buildings have now all got lids, they've got roofs, um, and you can see in the background that we've now got a maintenance area uh, and recycle area that's all that's all kicking in. So I'm going to start here, actually, because this we've spent the episode so far talking about offices and whatever, and I want to show you what's going on in, in this area. Uh, so I've done the warehouse. Uh, I'm happy with with how they're with how they're looking this one I have intentionally kept empty uh, along with these ones I've intentionally kept empty um, there's a reason for that I have started to get my first graphics crashes uh, where the game and the park is refusing to load for me based on graphics so that means to me that I'm close to the piece count limit um, that my PC will be able to run so I need to be very very careful about this sort of stuff so I'm sorry everybody I need to save piece count for the finale and the touch-up episode which means I'm not gonna be able to kit out these bits but what I have been able to do recycle area I mean this is probably way more ordered and orderly than a proper recycle area would be right you can imagine this would be a bit of chaos so I think as part of the um the final bit that I'm going to do next, I might just give this a, make this a bit messier. But this is fundamentally how I wanted it to be. These, by the way, I didn't realise were actually in-game pieces. They're the stunt pieces from the Studios pack. Um, and they work just fine, right? I was going to make my own. I'm going to make my own versions of these. But they work just fine. And I've been able to save piece count. Woohoo! Win-win. Um, so all you do is you just stop the trigger and it actually works quite nicely. So I thought, ah, why not? It's just going to it's just gonna work, right? So this is the recycle area then. So you've got all of your uh, shipping containers that would essentially, lorries would come in, pick up all of the recycling and, and leave. And you put all of your recycling in here. You sort it out wherever, uh, put it into individual shipping containers and lorries would take it away. Um, that's pretty much how it works. And then inside the actual warehouse itself. So I was talking uh, in the last update about them having like two floors. Or potentially having an office space, and that's what I've done here. So this has got an empty office space at the top here in case they wanted to use it. But down below, there's just a whoop, bit of a sorting area. You know, you've got pallets and bins and some extra spare crates and stuff. But can you imagine working in an office in this? This building is going to stink. Like, really, really stink. So we're not going to put an office in there. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've done on the outside. I've just uh, made it look like it's all metal, uh, corrugated iron. And on the so the ones that I've ta taken this design from, the inside metal is smooth and the outside is corrugated. It's almost like it's a double, a double metal wall. And that's what I've done here. Uh, and then there's just the brick. I wanted... I, I toyed, actually, I say I wanted, I, I toyed with changing the colour of these uh, from the actual in-game standard ones, but I actually quite liked the orange in the end. I went back to the original and went, no, I quite like it as, as orange. So sometimes you just don't have to get rid of the get rid of the in-game stuff, right? So then next door, this would be where your gardeners are. This is where your landscape guys are. This is where uh, they're going to do all, all of their work. So this, these guys do have an office at the top. This would actually, I think this would be the polar opposite office to work in, right? Because you've got flowers and stuff in here. Nightmare when when you're suffering from hay fever and whatever. But uh, I bet it would smell nice in here. So, yep, they've got just your standard office going on up here. Um, not really much to, to show you really it's just your standard office your desks and, and and whatever and then down below you've got an area for them to have all of the plants so they would they wouldn't just 
like buy plants in they have storage for them so all of the planters at the end of the season for example they all get collected up and they all get taken to this central warehouse distribution center and that's where they get looked after throughout the winter you know new seeds are planted and they're weeded and, and, and all of that stuff so this is kind of what i'm going for here this idea that you would have shelves and shelves and shelves of plants that are growing ready to be put into planters uh, and you would also have uh, boxes and storage of seeds and all sorts of stuff that, that that goes on that goes on in here. So I'm I've gone some way to try and replicate uh, try and replicate some of that. And if I can squeeze any more of the piece count out, then I'll make it so we've got some shelves for for seeds and stuff. Um, but like I said, I just need to be careful. I want to get the finale episode done, and then as part of the getting ready for workshop phase three, this is when I'm going to start revisiting stuff and and sort of squeezing as much as I as much as I can out. Uh, so coming over to our other buildings and our office buildings, um, still looking a little bit like theme hospital on The Sims. Um, I noticed as well, by the way, I, I built these on a grid, and that was intentional. Uh, they're not on the same grid; they are individual. They are individual buildings, but it's intentional that they're lined up because they have to sort of slot in like slot in like Tetris, right? So, um, and all I've done is I've just put some proper. Oh, look at that frame rate! Oh, that's tough. Um, <laughs> oh god, I'm not going to get this final done, am I? Uh, so all I've done in here is I've I've put in the, uh, the the actual proper ceiling. So this is the the proper office office ceilings. I've put all the glass in along the sides as well. So it's now an actual proper office. I just need to do the landscaping and everything on the outside. But this is this is looking like an office now, right? This is looking how it should. Mind you, it was to start with, but now you, you, we actually have a lid. Um, and there we go. So this is the this is the next office. And then the other the other ones are all exactly the same. Um, I've just used the same stuff. I, I need to go around as part of this final update and put all of the final touches to the actual outsides of the offices and stuff. So I know at the moment it's a bit rough around the edges, uh, and there's a lot of like bits that are missing, like this cladding and stuff that's missing. Sorry, I've just went in too high. There we go. Um, and so there we go. That's that's our. I think we're going to call it a call center, right? It's just how it's how it's become. It's just be, it's just a call center, uh, and then this is the this is the rest. So I'm not going to go through all of the office because you get the picture, right? That you understand that I've put roofs on stuff. And that's not too much to describe. <laughs> it's not okay. Great content. Uh, so I've also taken out the um, path that was here originally, and I've replaced it with the terrain paint. So I've managed to save some of the path creating calculations uh, and i just need to tidy up the outside and then obviously i'm going to put in foliage and stuff to bring this whole area to life and then i just need to finish all of this stuff as well worked on the perimeter um so i've put in the perimeter fence around here i've just given it some terrain paint as well just so i know that this is an area that's under construction um and i decided as well to actually put the curbs back on the paths for this bit in between it's kind of like that's not the star of the show really is for ray gate is it so this is completely sufficient where i need detail and everything i've put the curbs in manually but the ones in between i think is just fine and then coming to the front here this is where the biggest bit has changed um so this wasn't here before but this is now the staff car park uh so this is taken very much from a couple of the sites that we've got where the car park is at the front of the park beyond like a security gate if you like um so i just flattened off the land i've also made um the terrain sort of conform more to the landscape because this was just dropping away at, at one point so i've just changed that then i have put in uh, like a gatehouse almost like a, a checkpoint and i thought it would be quite nice actually to use the same design and style as the entrance plaza um it feels like it felt like that should have, that should be the case right so there's your there's your staff and trade entrance sign um and this is where you would come in and you would uh, either see your vehicle in and go to wherever you need to go or your staff would come through and then they would come into the into the staff car park so obviously i need to do all the decoration and all the touching up around here it needs pavements and it needs decorations and all of that sort of stuff um but inside the office it's just your office um pretty much based actually loosely on one of the offices that we've got one of the gatehouses that we've got so uh that's kind of what i've done I toyed with the idea of putting decorations in up here but actually no it's just a it's just a gateway office it's it's nothing it's not you're not going to spend a prolonged period of time there so then i have also done the perimeter fence around here 
Um, so I've made sure that we've we fenced off everything from the car park. So I just need to put all of the trees and the bushes in to obscure the uh, obscure the sight line. I've reconfigured this area slightly so that it's no longer a separate area. It's just one big plaza area. And then I've just copied across the same warehouses. And unfortunately, guys, it's the same. It's the same uh, thing as the other as the other side of the park. I'm not going to be able to decorate inside until I know what piece count I've got left. So um, it's just they're just there for now and uh coming over here this this is the surprise one this is the one that uh, i didn't really make much noise about at the beginning of the episode but we've got a railway shed so obviously the the only thing that was really missing uh from a uh, maintenance standpoint was that the railway line didn't have any kind of maintenance area i'd put the track in and i'd spoken about it in the past but i've never actually like talked about putting it in so this is just going to be a nice simple shed um nothing really too much going on just needs a few fine details and it needs a bit of detailing on the outside to make it look proper but uh yeah so that we've just got the maintenance shed going on so uh one final 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 thing uh just at the back here i've just made it a bit more of a, a plaza area same principle got to keep them got to keep them empty because of piece count for now but uh, i'm just going to come along and just make sure that this is uh, this is finalized so i'm going to carry on uh, because i'm in the home stretch now and i'm on a roll so uh, i will see you for the final one all right then, you lot, it's time for the done for now stamp to come out. And so I do still have some stuff right at the back of the park that needs doing, but I've added that to the list of things for the final, final episode. You know, the getting it ready for the workshop and everything. Um, and that's purely because I'm starting to get to the point where I really need to preserve everything and I want to make sure that we go out with a bang with the next episode. Uh, and so anything that's sort of like a nice to have, I've added onto that list. And if I get round to doing it in terms of piece count then great happy days and just to give you an idea i've had three crashes since my last update and each time this park takes 45 minutes to load i'm starting to lose a lot of time in crashes and i just can't risk it i just just can't do it so here we are we're we're done with the backstage area we've pretty much finished everything that we want to do so i've tidied up this whole area uh, we now have a nice little uh, pavement area, concrete area, and everything that's all that's all set up. We've got our staff car park that's that's coming here. Um, need to do some stuff around here, but again, this is added to the list of things that I need to do right at the very end, along with making this car park bigger. So I've realised that now the size of the park is the way it is, and we know how Raygate Lake actually is. This car park's not going to be big enough, so I need to extend it into this into this area. The general principle, if you remember back to the very early episodes, is that your guest car park should be about the same size as your theme park. Uh, it's definitely not that anymore. So I'm going to need to do that, but like I say, that's going to be after the finale, uh, the finale episode. So I've just done some touching up in this area then, uh, just made sure that the stuff inside here is all correct. Um, I've added in the, the staff units and everything, so they're, they're all here waiting to, to see our deliveries and our staff in. Uh, touched up this area here, added in some road markings, added in, added in some clutter, uh, making sure that it's all it's all good. Over in the railway maintenance area, I've finished this off. So this is now looking like it should do as a maintenance area. Again, it's just more clutter and detailing on the on the buildings and everything. Um, I did toy with the idea of making this corrugated metal, but actually I quite liked it being smooth metal. Um, I did have it and then I deleted it. So I thought, no, this actually looks all right as smooth metal. And then inside, I haven't really done much. Um, again, it's this piece count thing. I'm, I'm going to do some more detailing if I have the piece count after the next episode. Uh, so this is this is what the inside's looking like. I mean, you wouldn't find much more than this in here anyway, right? Because this is where you dismantle the, the trains and you'd load them onto pallets and stuff. So uh, nothing really particular, particularly special going on, going on in here. So coming around the outside perimeter... Um, then we've got obviously our construction site coming along here. I will be able to do the more detailing stuff along this side uh, should we get to it. And then I've just finished off here. So I've done all of the flowers and I've made sure that all the flower beds and everything. And I wanted some colour. Uh, I wanted, I, I could have just gone for the idea of just making it green. Guests aren't going to see this area. You don't need to make much effort with it, right? That's the kind of prevailing school of thought. But no, I thought it's, it'd be nice to have some flowers here. Nothing particularly special, you know, just those hundreds of packets of flowers that you can just throw seeds down and let it grow. There's no rhyme or reason to it and these are actually just the 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 rose wall climbers just laid on the laid on the ground 
um, and they do a, a fantastic job of, of covering it off. And then all I've done is intermittently just added in some extra flowers, so the narcissus, or whatever they're called, uh, and also just some um, bushes and greenery and everything, just to bulk it out, uh, just make it sort of not so clean and tidy, make it a bit unkempt. And then we come to the main office area. So I've now created the plaza area. This this would be no surprise. This brickwork has been in in place since the second or third update. So uh, this isn't familiar. But I've just added it in um, with the trees and also some of the lighting and everything just to make it make it good. And this would be the main walkway. You'd either go up up and left or up to the cafe area or straight into the reception area. So inside the buildings then. We've seen most of these already, uh, but here is the the inside. So here's the reception area for uh, the actual the actual area, the complex. Hello, mate. Uh, and then we come down the corridor uh, with the plant that's still sticking out in the middle of nowhere uh, into the main office. So we've seen this one. We've seen this one. And we've also seen this one as well. I've taken the conscious decision, by the way, to not have blinds on all of the windows. So we've got... It seems really weird, right? But we've... <laughs> strange story time. Uh, we've got some offices where this is the case. And I don't really know why. But they just don't have blinds up. So you've got loads of offices, office spaces that do have blinds. And then we've got offices that don't. So I don't want you to think that I've missed these out. This is deliberate. It's a strange deliberate, but it's deliberate. Uh, and then coming back this way. Walk back down. Walk, walk, walking backwards. Uh, we come down to the uh, wardrobe. So here we go with wardrobe. Ta-da! Uh, let me just look in and change my camera. There we go. So we're in the we're in the wardrobe. So we've seen this already. The stuff on the walls and all of the clothes and everything that they're in that are in front of you. But now the difference is it's slightly landscaped behind. Um, and we come into the kitchenette area looking awesome i like how this has turned out it's quite a nice little space um there's different colors and everything that are that are on here and i like the fact that it's dragged through that that theming and everything from the uh front from the business lounge it's nice nice and consistent toilets toilets are done there we go into the toilet and then also oh camera uh and then also into the into the next office so you get the idea it's it's offices right uh likewise with here i like this area as well change my camera uh, i like this area as well it's come through quite nicely um it's like a, a a more of a breakout area um i'm still struggling to actually make sense of this though because you've got a canteen area up the top right so why would you want to have something like this down here when you've got a pretty decent canteen in fact this area looks better than the canteen does it's, it's like i think i'd probably prefer to be in here uh, more than anything else and then we've just got our offices down the corridor to the other offices have we looked in this one yet no we haven't looked in this one yet so let's let's do something different uh same setup though it's still the ride names on the wall and the ceiling panels and a big office space open plan office space i mean there's nothing <laughs> nothing particularly special here really is there uh it's just it's just an office uh and then we're gonna go i am gonna go this way i'm just gonna cut through the wall because i'm lazy uh there we go so into the dance studio so here we go with the dance studio where uh, you make their memories remember that that's the Raygate staff motto you make their memories um and then we've just got the dance wall, so the mirror wall. And obviously it's, it's as close to a mirror as we can get in Planet Coaster because we don't have mirrored effects and stuff. So uh, that's as close as we're going to get. And then the toilets and everything, the other side are all uh, are all done. So I'm just going to walk through the wall again. Come down the alleyway and we enter into the training area. So this is like a breakout area. This is where you could come and do activities. It's a bit more um, wooden and... Uh, sort of like office, office if you like um official and then we come into the training room and this is what the training room now looks like so uh we go main um training table imagine being stood here as a trainer in front of a group of people hello i'm going to train you on how to do things uh <laughs> that's exactly how i used to sound as well and uh there we go so you just got a couple of like training items and stuff that that are that are around so it's looking looking good i'm quite pleased with how this is toilets how this is all turned out actually um 
given that it's it took it took a long time i didn't think i was going to get the payoff for it but actually it's it's looking quite good up here then nothing has changed from before just a bit of detailing um so there's no major things to show you a bit of detailing a bit of randomization it doesn't look much different but it, it's just enough for you to go oh yeah okay that's that's now looking a bit more natural than it does look than it looked copied and pasted um and the warehouses obviously are all the same. Uh, I've added in the foliage and everything. That's on obviously. That's an obvious difference, but yeah, you kind of knew that already. And then coming into the control center, this is looking good now. This kind of illustrates actually what I was talking about with the idea of these screens and what would be on here. So you have your opening times for the park. You have your queue times. You have um, another opening times thing. That's uh, supposed to be the incidents board. I think I saved the wrong file. So uh, that's the, supposed to be an incidents board where it says no reported incidents. And then this is no reported breakdowns. And then this is just the park map. And then this would be CCTV. And this would be something else. Um, but I haven't quite decided what it's going to be. But that's the principle of this whole area is that it's supposed to be some kind of command center, control center. And then the last bit to show you in this area then is the restaurant area. So I've just filled out all of the stuff at the front. So this would be the kitchen area. So I've just made sure that we've got windows. And again, I haven't kitted out the kitchen. and We, we know why we've not done that in Reggae Lake. Uh, so yeah, that's the kitchen area. Just put some guttering and stuff all along here just to fill it out a bit. Um, and then put all of the seating and everything out the front. Uh, and these loose umbrellas as well. I didn't want to attach the umbrellas to the actual um seating area i wanted them to be movable uh, so that's that's the kind of theme there coming in here this is where you grab your food uh so i like how this has turned out this this looks really good uh, reminds me a bit of a motorway service station actually but that's good that's not such a bad thing um and uh, this is something i've done deliberately as well so one of the i was <sighs> Because I'm a nerd, right? I sit in our canteens at the parks looking around going, wow, what does this luxury look like? And I spotted like really weird light pattern anomalies that really bugged me because I was like, you've made all of this effort to make it look good elsewhere and then you just got this random thing. And I wanted to replicate that here. Um, and so that's what I've done. Like these really random out of place light patterns. You just go, I don't know why that's like that, but it is. So anyway. You grab your food uh, from this area and then we change the camera and we go this way and then this is basically just one massive big food hole um, and it looks as empty and as bland and as horrific as I want and characterless as I wanted it to be because the idea is like all of your staff in your park would come here as well if, if they're on shift that's why it's positioned in this location because it's just about as close as you're going to get without taking away prime customer space so that's the whole purpose here. Um, I've done a little, quite a lot of tidying up in here, actually a few loose straggly ends and whatever that I had. Uh, and then you come out to the balcony area where if you want to come and sit outside. And then the last bit is you can then just come down back into the um, back into the office area from here. So again, you've got the disabled ramp that's down this way and you've got the stairs that are down this way. And it just takes you back down to the main plaza area. So... Guys, that's it. That's this episode done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching. Um, so the next episode then is the finale and it feels a bit strange because this, this has been a long time coming. This is six months in the works and it feels a bit weird that Raygate Lake is now coming to an end. Um, but it's going to be the finale and I, I wonder if anybody's worked out what the finale is going to be yet so guys thank you so 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 much for coming along thank you for everything that you guys do all of the support that you show if you're going to end up subscribing off the back of this episode thank you so much uh really really does mean the world especially as i'm on the grind to the, to the thousand um for those of you in the in the chat and the comments absolutely love talking to you guys uh you you are what makes this park enjoyable to do so uh, with that in mind i hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you for the finale. Ah! Keep yourself safe. Take care. Bye-bye.